We are in the Tanya because we're working on the myths of loving God. And we spoke a lot about Rabbi Akiva and the ultimate level of love. And we describe the ultimate level of love as the love of coming home to your source. The ultimate level of love is coming back to your source, coming back to where you come from. And the ultimate coming back to where we come from is returning and re-emerging into the oneness of God. And that's why the mitzvah of loving God comes right after Shema Yisrael Hashem Elokeinu Hashem Echad. Because the mitzvah of Shema Yisrael is to get to a consciousness that there's nothing but God. That's right, we're all inside of God right now. It's a bit trippy. That's why you don't need any psychedelics, you don't need any LSD. Just come learn Torah. It's way better, it's much cleaner, much higher, and gives long-term success. Yes, Shlomo. How come? What if you do both? So, <laughs> at the same time. At the same time. So generally there's a problem is that there's, uh, there's maybe a big high, but then a big drop, and that's not cool. Secondly, there's a problem that anything which is not earned, if a person didn't earn something, it slips away very quickly and oftentimes could put a person into a, a confused state and not know how to get back. And a feeling like I need to just use more to get back. That's why they'll take more or they'll take in, uh, higher dosages or more often. And therefore there's a problem because God is everywhere all the time, every single second. And we want to accustom people to getting high on God every second and not needing to use something that's going to give me this big up and then down. Uh, better do it again. And if I'm not on the goods, on the stuff, then I feel like I, oh, you know, I'm missing something. Why? God is here right now. Why are you missing something? He's here right now. So we want to create sustainable success. And the greatest way to create sustainable success is learning about the unity of God. Because when a person's in that consciousness, then they know that God is with them every single second. And they don't need anything else to get them there. Besides the fact that in our generation, I believe that we are extremely addictive by nature. And therefore, people also abuse substances more now than ever before, which is itself a problem. And therefore... Beyond that, I'm concerned that sometimes people have bad trips and that could be a, a big problem as well. And, uh, and things could happen that are very not okay and not healthy. Besides the fact that Rabbanim spoke that it's a, not a simple thing to change your conscious state and remove yourself from being able to just focus on reality. So a person's going to say, no, but I'm more in reality. You know, it's like I could play... Grand Theft Auto, and then I could play Grand Theft Auto on weed, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm way better. I'm not, I get like in the zone, you know what I'm saying? Like in the zone, bro. When you're high, then you really know how to play. But what if you don't? And then a person thinks they know what they're doing, and then it goes in a bad direction. So we want people to be healthy sustainably so, day after day. And this, that a person says, yeah, but I had this one experience and it brought me into God consciousness. If something happened and a person had an experience, then you should take that as a gift that Hashem gave you something. And then you should realize that now, how can I find my way home to you, Hashem, all the time? I don't have a need to use something to get me to that place. Because there's going to be times in a person's life that you're not going to just be able to take the stuff. I find this happens with husbands and wives, is that the husband who got used to whenever stress happened in his life, so he just smoked some reefer. And uh, that's like an old man term <coughs> for weed. And, uh, and what happens? So when he was uh, stressed out, so he'd smoke. Now what's the problem with that? He doesn't know how to deal with it. He doesn't know how to deal with that when he's not when he's not uh, smoking. 
Or, by the way, very kind person drinks. Sadly, person gets too stressed out. The whole idea of the happy hour is so not a Torah concept. You know what the happy hour is? You finish work, you go drink. Why, why do you have to go drink? Because you have a stressful day. Pardon? It's 50% off. It's 50 because they, they, <laughs> they play in the people's... Uh, Need to blow off steam. Yeah, why? Because it's too... You can't go, thank you, you, Gabriel, you can't go home to your family because that's just too real and too stressful and therefore better get plastered j just a little bit on the way home and have to call an Uber to get you back home uh, and then you'll be able to manage, you know, what's going on at, at the house. What is that? That's horrible. That's so not unity God consciousness. Unity God consciousness means Every single moment of my life, I'm in control and I'm aware of God's guiding hand. Where do we find that mitzvah? Shema Yisrael Hashem Elokeinu Hashem Echad. That God's unity is so great that it encompasses every single moment of my life, every single second of my life, to the degree that we're going to learn over the next week or two. And therefore, I suggest everybody bring a Tanya, if you have a Tanya. Very, very kedai to bring a Tanya. Because within the context of loving God, we're going to see, as we built up the last few days, that the ultimate love of God is connecting to God as really where I come from. And that the separation between God and I is less than you might have thought. Because if there's nothing but God, so then I'm much, more, I'm much closer to Hashem than I really realized. And when a person returns to their source, there's a tremendous love that's built from that place and that consciousness. So in order to go and fulfill the mitzvah of loving God, we're going to have to learn a little bit of, I won't call it Kabbalah, but a little bit more of some of the deeper ideas of God's unity. And uh, this is where it gets really, really juicy and really geschmack. And therefore we're gonna have to essentially explain how God is creating the entire universe right now, okay? So I'm going into the second book of the Tanya, just so people are oriented, called the book of Shar Hayichud Ve'amunah. The Gate of Unity and Emuna. You ready? Okay. Yeah? Oh, I knew you would be. We ready? Okay. This is really good stuff. So I'm just, I'm just telling you, this is the stuff that like, goes all the way in. It's really good if you have the Tanya in front of you because sometimes it's hard to listen if you don't have the words in front of you. So I'll try to like, you know, jump up and down and jumping jacks and people fall asleep. Uh, okay, we're good so far. And if you have a Tanya, just bring it. So explains here in the first chapter. He's going to quote a verse, a verse from King David. And I want you guys to translate the verse from him. I'm going to read it to you. Le'oilam Hashem. Devarcha nitzav b'shamayim. Anybody know how to translate those words? Le'oilam? For, or the reality, the world forever. Le'oilam. Hashem. That's an easy one. Hashem. Devarcha. We're the Gogekians. Your words, excellent. Nitzav. Nitzav is like our standing b'shamayim. In, in the heavens. Okay? Simple meaning of the verse. What was King David telling us? Simply so. The simple meaning of the verse is that, what are God's words? Devarcha. It's creation. God, well, that, that's the deeper meaning. We'll get to that. Yeah, well, that's also the deeper meaning. It's, it's related to that. God, your words, i.e. your decrees... Your decrees, when you make a decree, they are forever. You don't just change your mind, so to speak. If God makes a decree, simple meaning, devarcha nitzav b'shamayim are like standing in the heavens. They're always there, just like the heavens are there. So to your decrees, you don't just, uh, you know, flip-flop on whatever your, your constituents say, and what's going to get me the most votes. And therefore, I'll just change my policies, like most politics, sadly so. Hashem says, this is what it is. And that 
because it's the truth of reality and those words are going to continue on. That's the, that's the simple meaning. Comes the Baal Shem Tov to teach us a deeper meaning, which was already found in the Medrash. Now hold on to this. This is, hold on to your tzitzis. Natana, you ready? You holding on? Let's go. Says the Baal Shem Tov, Ki devarcha, what else are your words? Your words, Sha'amarta Yehira Kia Besaycha Mayim. Your words, let's go back to the creation of the world. Why is there a rakia? What's a rakia? Let's call it a firmament, let's call it part of the heavens, the atmosphere. What's keeping the atmosphere up? What's keeping the planets up in the sky? Now you might say the the gravity, the gases, the, the, the gravitational pull, whatever it is. You might say the science shows that it's X, Y, and Z. So what do we say to that? Well, what's keeping the science keeping it up? Like why isn't it changing and fluctuating? And like so then let's even go detailed into that. God set up the world. Where do you know what's keeping up, let's call it, let's say the heavens. It's your words, i.e., you are constantly saying, we're going to, we're going to have to talk about how God constantly says things, He's not like us, how your words, i.e., let there be a heaven, are constantly, those letters, those letters, those isias, your letters that you are constantly emanating, those letters are the very fabric that are keeping up a heaven. Meaning, if for any moment you stopped uttering those letters, the heaven would go back to absolute nothingness. Let's extend this. What's keeping this table here right now? You'll say, because a lumberjack cut down the wood and then he made the wood and now it's right here. Is that why there's a table here? It's mostly empty space. Correct. Very good. The reason why there's a table here is because there are Hebrew letters. You know what they are? Shin, Lamed, Ches, Nun. That God is speaking those letters into existence every single moment. For each and every table. For each and every table. And if you had the eyes to see, you could see that the fabric of this table is information, is the Hebrew letters Shin, Lamed, Ches, Nun, and you are speaking it into creation every single moment, and if for one second, God, you stop speaking table into existence, it would go back to its existence before the six days of creation. Let's extend that. Clothing, mug, Buildings, electricity, bank accounts, man, man Animal. animals, Jupiter, Pluto, water, water. that'd be an, an intense one, sun, you are speaking those words, those letters, and those Hebrew letters are creating the fabric of those entities, and because those Hebrew letters are being spoken, those entities exist. Let's now go back to our verse, and let's read this into the verse. Le'oilam Hashem, always Hashem, devarcha, your words, nitzav bashamayim. Nitzav means your worlds are holding up Shemayim. Not that they're always there. Like you said at one time. Hear, the, hear it in the words. Look what King David is really whispering to us. King David is whispering to you and I these words. La'oilam Hashem devarcha your words nitzav bashamayim. Your words are holding up the heavens. How are they holding up the heavens? By saying heavens. Let there be heavens. And if God at any moment took away those letters, the heavens would be gone. Nobody saw the Matrix? You know, in like the end of the movie when like Neo goes like loco? 
and he just starts seeing everything in letters, numbers. So they weren't far off, right? You know what I'm saying, right, Steve? Yeah. He starts seeing everything in like those letters. So those, that's a, actually a pretty accurate <coughs> picture of what's going on, except they're all Hebrew letters. They're all Hebrew letters, different permutations of the Hebrew letters. That is the fabric of all of creation. And the Balatanya, when he was on his deathbed, so he asked, he said to his grandson, he said, what do you see when you look up at the roof? And he said, Zaidi, I see the ceiling beams of the roof. What do you see, Zaidi? And he said, I see the Hebrew letters, Kuf, Vav, Resh, He, Koira, which means a beam. I see the Hebrew letters. I don't see beams anymore. I just see the Hebrew letters as God is flashing that ceiling beam in and out of existence. He's creating it right now. That's what I see. The Balatanya at the end of his life got to such a level of unity of God, he started to see the letters. Now you see where you know, Neo got it from. He must have learned about the Balatanya a little bit. Right. So is it that like every single individual Jew or person even, like their name is what's creating them? Like they are their name, right? Something like that? Yeah, so we're gonna, the, the Nisham is going to be different. We're going to learn about the Nisham. The Nisham is one, the, a very unique part of existence. We'll have to get to the Neshama. Right now, every other part of existence, God is speaking it into existence. He's, even the angels. Even the angels. And I mean all the entire system of angelic creatures. There's endless worlds of angels. God is speaking those angels into existence. We're going to talk about the soul. The soul is its own special category. We'll get to the soul. Everything in the entire world, God is speaking into existence. Is it just a Jewish soul or all souls, period? It's all souls. We'll get to what, where the Jewish soul applies and what's, what's unique about that. And we know that anybody who wants to become a Jew, they're able to. Everybody who wants can. And we just don't go out... Uh, telling the whole world, but if somebody hears the calling and they feel that they are hearing the message of that relationship with Hashem, then fine. Anybody can come. We just don't force anything. We don't force anything. Now look what's interesting about that. God, your letters are giving life to this table. This table would go, would leave existence if the Hebrew letters, and the Hebrew letters are also just, they're packets of God energy that are keeping this table in existence. Now, one of the things we're going to do, probably tomorrow the next day, is we're going to answer the heretics that are going to have a very big misunderstanding of how the world works. So we'll get to the heretics. So just, you know... Stay tuned. We're getting there. But before the heretics, we just have to build up the system that all of creation is being brought into being through the constant influence of God creating it and speaking it into existence. Okay? Step two. If God at any point took away these letters that very thing would go back to pre-six days of creation. It would just revert back into the oneness of God. Now we say chas v'shalom on that because you know, we're happy that we're all here. We're happy there's water, right? It's good, right? We're happy there's water here? It's good? Yeah, because God is constantly speaking it. Thank you, Zevi. Constantly speaking water into creation and that, therefore we have it, which is very, very good for us. Which, by the way, this always gives me a smile on my face. You know why? Because any person, anytime a person thinks like, is God really like with me? I feel lonely. What's the greatest proof that God is interested in you? Because if he wasn't, you wouldn't exist. Because if he wasn't, you wouldn't exist. Think about that for a second. You must be of interest to God because God is creating you into existence every single second, which means God's interest, Hashem is focused, is interested in you. That's very beautiful. 
there's a purpose for you. There's a reason why you're here. Okay? The Balatanya brings a number of other psukim to point this out. Dvar lekeni yokum lioilam, dvar v'chaim v'kayom load. Okay. And this means all the worlds are being created in this way. Now you know what's more? The Balatanya points out from the Arizal an important point, which is don't just think living matter has this God energy, the Hebrew letters that are giving it existence. Inanimate ad- objects as well, like a stone. And that's why the Arizal says that every single part of creation has a soul inside of it. So somebody says to you, does a rock have a soul? Yeah. It does. We learned from when Moshe hit the rock. There's an element, yeah, that he was supposed to speak and he hit. How here do we see there's a soul? Shagam ben doimem mamish kamay avonim ve'afar amayim yesh bechines nefesh v'chiyus ruchanes. There is a spiritual energy inside that rock that's giving it existence. God is interested and he put a soul into it, a spark of life. And if God at any moment withdrew that energy, it would revert back to nothingness. Remind me tomorrow, we have to start with a very important analogy about rocks and about how this world literally, if God took energy away from it, would immediately just revert back into nothingness. That would be the default setting, which means God is constantly creating existence through the Hebrew letters, every single second, interested in creation, which means, is creation separate in any way from God? No. Not at all. It's his interest. It's interest, and it's unified with God. Unified with God. We should mamish be zayich to this unity. Amen to amen. Kol tov. Does our body after we die have a soul? Yeah. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you. It does have a soul. Because